नहीं जो नहीं करो बीसों समझौते पर स्वतंत्र भारत का मस्तक नहीं झुकेगा अगणित बलिदान और से अर्जित यह स्वतंत्रता शिवसेद शोणित से सिंचित यह स्वतंत्रता त्याग तेज तप बल से रक्षित यह स्वतंत्रता दुखी मनुजता के हित अर्पित यह स्वतंत्रता इसे मिटाने की साजिश करने वालों से कह दो चिनगारी का खेल बुरा होता है In 1971, India won the war against Pakistan that resulted in the birth of Bangladesh. Pakistan lost half its country and had to publicly surrender to India. A crushing defeat that continues to haunt it. Though border skirmishes and military standoffs between the two countries were common, tensions further escalated in the year 1998. conducted three underground nuclear tests in the Pokhara Lake. When there was nuclear testing in 1998, a lot of that progress was thrown backwards. My good friend uh, Sandy Berger, uh, who was uh, the national security advisor at the time, had in 1998 advised me that uh, they were planning that year to take uh, President Clinton uh, to India. And that was all postponed. Uh, the anti-nuclear hawks in the Clinton administration were on the ascendancy uh, and uh, the, the relationship did go into a tailspin. Just two weeks after India stunned the world by carrying out the Pokhran tests, Pakistan also conducted its nuclear tests in Chagai, Balochistan. Nuclear factor did play a major role uh, when it comes to political strategy is concerned. But um, uh, right from the beginning, uh, our political leadership was very clear that there is no question of uh, uh, using or being able to use uh, nuclear weapons. And I don't think Pakistan also was prepared to use any nuclear weapon. There was a lot of noise being made uh, more in the international media. The United States was very much afraid of nuclear war on the South Asian continent. As international pressure mounted on both the countries, Prime Minister Atal Bihari Vajpayee decided to visit Lahore for peace talks. Though news of Pakistani infiltration in the valley started making headlines in May 1999, the intrusion started seven to eight months before the summer of 1999. The planning for this started somewhat, somewhere after the nuclear tests. And most of us were focusing on the nuclear tests, not on Kashmir and how to deal with it. Uh, in fact, uh, bulk of my time was spent on doing that. Uh, and uh, the net result was that they infiltrated from somewhere just after the nuclear tests across the line of control to seize control of commanding heights over the Srinagar Leh Road. While the Indian government maintains there was no intelligence failure in Kargil, experts have blamed both RAW and the Intelligence Bureau. Finally, it was the local shepherds who alerted the Indian army. I was about 30 years old. So, I was just a little bit of a trouble. I was just a little bit of a trouble. I was just a little bit of a trouble. I was just a little bit of a trouble. I was just a little bit of a trouble. I was just a little bit of a trouble. I was just a little bit of a trouble. 
तो कोई छः बंदे नज़र आया मेरे को ऊपर टोप में बंजू टोप में बर्फ था बर्फ़ के बीच में कोई रास्ता जैसा नज़र आया तो मैं बंगे सर में देखते हुए तो वहाँ छः बंदे नज़र आए कोई बर्फ़ फर रहा था पत्थर ढूंढ रहा था फिर तो लगभग मैं वहाँ दस मिनट तक रुका फिर मैं वापस आया यहाँ गांव में आया तो यहाँ हमारे जो ब्रिज है एक सूर्य नाले जाने का एक ब्रिज है तो वहाँ थ्री पंजाब का कोई एक जवान बैठता था तो वहाँ एक गार्ड कमांडर था बलविंदर सिंह उसको मैंने रिपोर्ट दे दिया साहब जी मैं इस तरह हम यहाँ घूम हुआ था ढूंढने के लिए गया तो वहाँ कोई बंदे है आई गॉट द फर्स्ट न्यूज अबाउट इन्फिल्ट्रेशन वेन आई वॉज इन चेक रिपब्लिक एंड आर एम्बेसडर देयर इनफैक्ट ही हैड रेड इट ऑन इंटरनेट एंड ही टोल्ड मी अबाउट इट सो फ्राम देयर आई रैंग अप आर सीनियर स्टाफ ऑफिस ऑपरेशनल स्टाफ एंड आई आस्क दैम इज इट करेक्ट दैट देर हैज बीन some major infiltration in kargil sector and i was told that uh, yes there has been some infiltration but uh, they didn't know the strength at that time so uh, initially we had a setback because of poor intelligence and uh, poor surveillance um, but then we overcame that uh, i was uh, called to delhi for a briefing by general uh, malik of the prime minister uh, this was around the th third week of may i think of of that now uh, that year if yes, that's as far as i can recall third week and the it was in the army's uh, operations room and i was horrified to see the pakistani deployments uh, deployments right along the line of control there were f flags of places they had taken over the propaganda that pakistan was putting out to the world and this is important is they said that that, that in this area the line of control was not properly demarcated and interestingly uh, we uh, responded very fast to that and we distributed maps which had been signed by the army commanders after the simla agreement delineating where the line of control was in kargil so they were lying to the world and they had the most important diplomatic gain was we were able to tell the world these people have violated the sanctity of the line of control Nineteenth February, nineteen ninety-nine, Indian Prime Minister Atal Bihari Vajpayee boarded the inaugural bus to Lahore at Amritsar. Visuals of Vajpayee's bonhomie with his Pakistani counterpart Nawaz Sharif symbolized hope in bilateral ties. But Pakistan's Chief of Army Staff, General Pervez Musharraf, was already hatching a sinister plan. Actually, to be honest with you, uh, in Islamabad. we were tied up arranging mr vajpayee's visit and therefore the focus of the embassy was really on the vajpayee visit and its aftermath after all it was the prime minister of india coming they had taken a calculated decision to make a real effort for peace and harmony and mr vajpayee very deeply believed in that and therefore the focus of our attention was on that it was really even the uh, our forces there came to know of it pretty late and when the vajpayee visit took place i know we didn't have an inkling of it though musharraf has gone on record to say that the army had briefed nawaz sharif his assertion has been sharply contradicted by both nawaz sharif and sartash aziz the then foreign minister i think that what kargil showed was that there really was not a single government uh, for pakistan Uh, the uh, invasion at Kargil had been planned by the military, and Nawaz Sharif evidently knew little uh, or or nothing about it. Uh, and it showed the United States that you couldn't rely on a civilian government in terms of national security matters in regard to Pakistan, because the military. uh the i s i the inter uh, services intelligence operation had their own agenda 
And so to be able to deal with Pakistan was going to have to be done in a very uh, different kind of manner than it had been up to that point. By March 1999, the Mujahideen, with the assistance of Pakistan's Northern Light Infantry, had occupied several heights in the Kargil Gras sector. Pakistan believed that India would not be able to dislodge the intruders from the key positions once they were taken, and that it would not be able to mount a quick counterattack. On both accounts, Pakistan was mistaken. This was the thinking in the Pakistani military that the Indian Army fighting insurgency for almost uh, 10 years or more just did not have the stamina to fight a conventional war. So they, around the time of the nuclear tests when tensions built up in 1998, uh, Musharraf had just taken over and uh, he um, initiated this plan to take over the hilltops of, over Kargil meaning they would get control by sitting on these hilltops of all movement of our forces from Srinagar to Ladakh and, 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 and to Siachen. The aim was to take over the Kargil hilltops and cut off Ladakh and Siachen. Not many know that India turned to the United States to seek GPS data to identify the intrusion, but the United States government denied that access to India. The incident spurred India to build an indigenous navigation system, the Indian Regional Navigation Satellite System, or NAVIC. The Indian Army sent a patrol to ascertain the infiltration. Five Indian soldiers, along with Captain Saurabh Kalia, were captured by the Pakistanis and tortured for weeks before being killed. Their mutilated bodies were handed over to India on the 9th of June. It was the last straw. Pakistan's infiltration mission was codenamed Operation Badr. The aim was to severe the link between Kashmir and Ladakh and force the Indian forces to withdraw from the Siachen glacier. However, Pakistan did not anticipate Operation Vijay, the ferocious Indian counter-assault. Well, there's no question that Pakistan hurt themselves uh, very greatly uh, by uh, this surreptitious uh, invasion across the border and then the attempt to try to say that it was all uh, uh, done uh, by uh, a Kashmiri. I mean, that was ridiculous. It was at such high altitude and required such technical support that it couldn't have been anybody but the Pakistan military uh, who were involved. Pakistan army had employed uh the Mujahideen facade as a deception plan. And they did that quite successfully. Uh, all our intelligence agencies and people, the frontline soldiers also, they uh, accepted that uh, uh, hook, line and sinker, literally everything. And therefore, it took quite some time for me to convince everybody that we were not fighting Mujahideen and we were fighting the Pakistan army. Now we have different rules of engagement to fight with Mujahideen and different for the Pakistan army. If you are fighting Pakistan army, obviously it is a war. And uh, that was also uh, another reason why our uh, progress in the beginning was slow. Uh, but once we were convinced and we were able to convince the political authorities that these are not Mujahideen, but these are Pakistan army personnel, uh, then there was no looking back. More than 200,000 Indian troops were mobilized. The Indian Army was not only coping with extreme climatic conditions, but they also had to adhere to the guideline of not crossing the line of control. Maximum available firepower, including that of the artillery and the Indian Air Force, was deployed. The infantry battalions also launched unrelenting attacks to 
take back the high altitude mountain tops occupied by the aggressors. May 25, 1999. The Indian government took the audacious decision to employ fighter jets for precision airstrikes. Indian Air Force's deadly MiG and Mirage 2000s dealt a destructive blow to the entrenched enemy. IAF lost three of its officers and two airmen in the conflict, but the tide turned in India's favor. After the enemy had been dislodged from the heights of Tololing by the end of June, the Indian army started planning what turned to be the bloodiest battle of the Kargil conflict, recapturing Tiger Hill. If you think that operations were limited to only the army and the air force wings, then think again. Though in a much smaller capacity, the Indian Navy had a role to play too. It launched Operation Talwar to blockade Pakistan's Karachi port to cut off supply route. Later, Pakistan admitted that they were left with just six days of fuel to sustain itself had a full-fledged war broken out. On the same day that India recaptured Tiger Hill, Nawaz Sharif flew to the United States to seek mediation for bringing the conflict to an end. We were on a winning spree at that time and we had been capturing. In fact, the day uh, Nawaz Sharif met uh, President Bill Clinton on the 4th of July in the evening, that very morning we had captured Tiger Hill and we had announced it to the world. So everybody knew that now it's just a question of a few weeks and we will be able to wipe them out from our area. Uh, but after a uh, 4th of July meeting between uh, Nawaz Sharif and President Clinton, then uh, there was, uh, I would say, some pressure that, look, uh, should we start talking to Pakistan now? And should we let them now go back? Because that is what they wanted. They wanted us that we should permit them to go back. So that started building up. Three months and eight days after his meeting with Clinton, Nawaz Sharif was overthrown by General Pervers Musharraf in a coup. Fourth of July. As the United States was celebrating its Independence Day, the capital was jolted by an uninvited visitor. Clinton did not receive Nawaz Sharif at the White House and instead met him in the library at Blair House across the street from the president's residence. Nawaz Sharif uh, was looking for allies, allies against uh, Musharraf and his military as much as, as anything else. And so he reached out and he came in... Uh, the, and Sandy Berger, the National Security Advisor, along uh, with President Clinton and Ambassador Rick Enderforth, who at the time was Assistant Secretary for South Asia at the State Department, went across uh, to Blair House, where Nawaz Sharif was staying. Uh, and uh, Nawaz Sharif, uh, I think much to his surprise, rather than getting uh, support just got really a, a both barrels approach to uh, the necessity for Pakistan to pull back and uh, that there was no equity and all of this uh, that had been said by Pakistan about it not being uh, fomented from uh, the military of Pakistan was all a lie and a cover-up for what had happened. And I think he was, uh, he was both shocked, uh, but uh, in a way, uh, perhaps gratified because it showed that he had to step in and take a, a stronger approach. Just after the meeting, Pakistan started to withdraw its troops. This was perhaps the beginning of a new relationship between India and the United States. Ceasefire was announced on the 26th of July. 
Sharif's action of ordering the pullout from the Indian side of the line of control also had an unexpected result. Uh, the soldiers of theirs who died, um, they wouldn't even accept the bodies back. They refused to acknowledge it. And when I went into it at length, most of them were from the Northern Light Infantry. They were Shias from Gilgit, Baltistan. Second class citizens or not citizens at all in Pakistan. And they were not willing to accept their bodies back. I mean, it was the most shameful episode on the, uh, on the part of Musharraf to not accept the bodies of his soldiers back. It is important to note, even during the conflict, the bus service that was started by Vajpayee and Sharif did not halt. Even the railway service of the Samjhota Express continued. Even at the height of Kargil, we had our channels of communication with Pakistan. Uh, and they were kept open. So the channels of communication should be kept open. And frankly, another thing I'd like to state here, uh, I met Mr. Vajpayee and I asked him, uh, what about the Kargil bus service and Samjota Express? He said, what is your view? I said, my view is we are not at war with the people of Pakistan. We are at war with the army of Pakistan and their uh, jihadi followers. Let the bus service continue and let the uh, Samjota Express continue. It paid off well because I think people in Pakistan realized that India uh, was angry, but it was not directed at every Pakistani, but against their army and those responsible. It was a great uh, unifier as far as the nation is concerned. When people all over India, in every corner of India, they were able to watch whatever was, hap was happening in Kargil and Dras. So it unified, it united the whole country together. And they gave us tremendous support. So that was another very positive aspect of uh, the televised war. A TV channel also acted as an ally of the Indian Army and helped in nailing several lies being perpetuated by Pakistan. While capturing or recapturing all our locations, we had also uh, captured a large amount of uh, documents and letters which were in the position of uh, soldiers, Pakistani soldiers who had died, who had been killed. So we had that solid proof with us now that these are all Pakistani soldiers and these are not Mujahideen. And I must uh, give full compliment to ZTV. They agreed to do that and they showed these letters. Now, it had another impact, and that impact was within Pakistan, because Pakistan army had not told their own public that they were fighting this war, uh, uh, in the Pakistan army was fighting this war. So when Pakistan public realized, after seeing those letters on the Z television uh, thing, uh, that, uh, uh, these are our own soldiers, our own kith and kin who are fighting the war. It had a, a tremendous impact uh, on the morale of uh, people in Pakistan and they started questioning their own army as to why have you not been telling us what is going on. Given the backdrop of China's traditional pro-Pakistan policies, it is important to know why the dragon continued to remain neutral during the conflict. Sure, they should have condemned uh, Pakistan, as did the U.S., and the fact that they didn't showed a shift uh, uh, in regard to Pakistan-Chinese relationships even more in the direction of, uh, of the interest of China uh, as opposed to the interest of the United States. And what Cargill showed was that that uh, relationship 
uh, was extremely strong. And in fact, uh, more digging that went on, you, I think that it's pretty clear that in regard to the nuclear capability of Pakistan, a lot of that technology uh, came from China. A new relationship started between India and Israel during the Kargil conflict. Israel stood by us, especially the sort of um, ammunition, equipment and so on that we got at that point in time. Bombs for the mirages was vital and crucial because it was the mirages which were doing the attacks. India's victory came at a cost. 527 Indian soldiers sacrificed their lives and more than 13,000 were injured. Four Bravehearts were given the army's highest honor, the Parambir Chakra. Naib Subedar Yogendra Singh Yadav had volunteered to fix the rope for the soldiers to reach the top of Tiger Hill. He survived 15 bullets. Rifleman Sanjay Kumar led the attack in Mushok Valley. His act of bravery inspired his platoon to capture Area Flat Top. Captain Manoj Kumar Pandey killed two enemy soldiers in a hand combat and went on to capture the strategic Jubar Top, succumbing to his injuries later. Captain Vikram Batra too was killed in action. He was famous for using the slogan Yedil Mangimor to signal the success of his mission. After two months, three weeks, and two days, the conflict came to an end. A war memorial was built by the Indian Army in November 2014 in Dras. With the Tololing Heights, Tiger Hill, and Batra Top in the background, the memorial reminds us of the valor of the Indian soldiers and the sacrifices made. Although 20 years have passed since Kargil War, but uh, the circumstances on the line of control or in the international border have not changed. 